Langdon School in the London Borough of Newham is a large comprehensive where whole school policies and practices have developed to support disabled pupils. The school has 1,800 pupils aged 11 to 16. More than 10% of pupils are disabled pupils. 50% of pupils are entitled to free school meals and 80% are from minority ethnic backgrounds. In 2004, 47% of pupils achieved levels A star to C at GCSEs and 98% of pupils left with at least one GCSE. Langton School has resource provision for pupils with severe communication difficulties and Newham's visual impairment resource base is situated on the school site. Vanessa Wiseman has led the school for 12 years. When I first came, it was perhaps more around inclusion in a sort of social sense and, and very much around caring for young people, which is obviously very, very important. But perhaps the curriculum and the sort of challenge to develop young people's learning wasn't as strong. And I think what we have done over that time is to make both important parts so that, you know, we are still caring. We do still want to be very much about social development, but we're also about making sure that all young people can access the curriculum and, and, and really achieve academically as well. Over the last decade, training and skills developed to meet the needs of disabled pupils has benefited all teaching and the school's academic results and value-added achievements have improved. It's benefited everybody in the school, I think, in terms of seeing that everybody can achieve. And I think it's improved teaching and I think in terms of parental support for the school, what's come through very strongly is that parents can see the benefits of inclusion for all the young people in the school. They see those approaches benefiting every young person's learning and making all the young people in what is a large school feel very personally valued and feel personally cared for. How have you, the senior management team and your governors developed such a whole school approach to making reasonable adjustments? We've had to really work on leadership, team leadership. Um, we've had to work on making sure that everybody in the school saw inclusion as part of what they did. So team leaders, managers in the school, leaders in the school. We've, we've worked very strongly to make sure that they see inclusion as part of their role and making sure that their teams support inclusion, that it's not just the responsibility of one team. I think it's also been about looking with greater rigour at what we've been doing. We are making sure that everything that we do really does cater for different young people across the school. Adults other than teachers in school, whether it's been mentors or teaching assistants, have really played a key part in developing inclusion in the school. Langton School has a team of 30 teaching assistants. The development of their role has been vital in making the curriculum accessible to disabled pupils. Teaching assistants are now linked to departments and so are building up considerable expertise in differentiating work and now have time to build good working relationships with subject teachers. Within lessons, teaching assistants sometimes work one-to-one -one with disabled pupils but often support small groups or the whole class. In this Year 11 science class, Boona and Sada, who both have visual impairments, are supported by careful pre-planning of the lesson by the teacher and during the lesson by their peers and by a teaching assistant when she is needed. Assistants encourage peer cooperation and learning and work to ensure that their presence does not isolate disabled students. It's very easy to become a barrier to, to, to disabled students. You know, people can talk through you to the student and that's not what we want. What we want is to the, for the student to be included in mainstream as much as possible. So that's what we, you know, what we try and do. And it also helps other students as well because you know, you're assisting the teacher more. Other students may think, oh, she's not just there for, for Johnny, I'll, I'll ask as well, you know, and you end up helping the whole class or specific groups. Um, start again. Build for me all teaching assistants at Langdon have had training for learning support and have regular specific training to support individual disabled pupils. All teaching assistants have three planning periods per week. Those who run small withdrawal groups and senior teaching assistants have additional planning time. As a result of the built-in planning time, the teaching assistants team has differentiated the Year 7 curriculum for a wide range of students, including students working below Level 2. This bank of resources will be adapted for disabled pupils in the future. Teaching assistants work alongside key workers to support disabled pupils with severe learning difficulties. They're attached to the student from year 7 to year 11 when they leave. They withdraw from 
one lesson per week and work exclusively on the students' targets and life skills. Um, life skills mean in general um, living skills. We have a flattened school which, which they can use. So it's general living skills, what, what we will do each day. Um, making simple meals, road safety, shopping, money. Key workers discuss the life skills curriculum and agree targets with students and parents at review meetings. At Langton School, reasonable adjustments have been made to the curriculum to support disabled pupils with severe communication and language difficulties. Staff have found that additional sports tuition is popular, benefits students' health and really increases their participation in mainstream classes. The activities are varied from trampolining to um, tennis to football, cricket. They get the benefits of all the activities there are. Normally in, in mainstream sports, they tend to be a little bit shy, they don't participate as much as they should do, whereas with a group of students with mixed abilities, they're a lot more confident. And the activities set up is really to sort of boost their confidence, develop their skills, and also to promote health and fitness. And parents have told us a lot of the students do benefit from it. Because they're far more confident than they were before, so therefore when they go to a mainstream lesson, they tend not to lag behind as they would before. Strategies that support the school's behaviour policy include training for all staff, open discussions about difficulties and learning mentors. We work with disaffected students. Um, that could be a wide range of things, from loss of esteem to feeling that they're being bullied or uh, peer problems or pressure at home. A wide range of issues. What we do, we have one-to-one -one mentoring where they come in, they feel free to come in and talk to us. And if we feel that we need to pass them on to other agencies, relevant agencies, we do so. If they have a problem in school, we try and sort it out with the teachers. And sometimes it's five minute job, half an hour a day's job. Sometimes it takes longer. And um, we have them on our file. We work quite closely with them. I had been bullied with, for my friends for two and a half years. And um, I wouldn't tell anyone except my mum and I wouldn't let her come to school either. But um, I just, there was one day where I just couldn't take it anymore. And then um, Yasmin came and talked to me. Uh, still, yeah, I still talk to her now. If I have a problem, I go to her. And it, it usually helps because it gets them a lot of your mind. It wasn't actually physical bullying, it was more psychological. And um, it did stop straight away actually, but it did hurt for like, a long time. What would you say to other students? They shouldn't suffer in silence because it um, could make you do quite a lot of drastic things. And it, talking to someone always helps, even if it's someone you don't know before, but you kind of feel comfortable with them. Thanks, Shiny. I mean, it's helped her and it's helped us as well. I mean, we learn a lot from them as well, so it works both ways. There are also many lunchtime clubs, part of the school's strategy to constructively engage pupils and to reduce lunchtime incidents. How does the school monitor and maintain successful strategies? I think it's both the mixture of revisiting and moving forward on things. You can never say you're fully inclusive. We think it's something where you've got to keep looking at what you're doing. So we constantly keep going back and testing out whether things that we think we put in place some time ago are still there. There's then constantly thinking about how can we push it further. So in terms of things like transition at 16, we've been looking a lot at that, improving that further. Looking at access to all of the curriculum areas, um, making sure that we're really pushing what the young people are getting there. So as, as a new course comes in, can we make sure that all young people have got access to that? actually looking at things like the extracurricular activities, the journeys and all of those sorts of things because clearly there are things there that are sometimes less easy to have somebody included in because it means making changes that you may not have made before. I think the school is inclusive in the widest sense. I guess what we're trying to do is have a school that reflects what we would like to see society out there being, people just being people in the school and their needs being met in all sorts of different ways. I think also it's about people working together and respecting each other and um, learning about each other, learning about difference, learning about similarities. So I think it's good for like 
everyone to be mixed together because then like if you're good at something and somebody else is good at another because you're all treated equal you can help each other to understand it better as you grow up you're learning about um people's disabilities and differences um like cultures and religions you're learning about each other in different ways inclusion in schools is good because um you know how other people who are different from you know how to act you know how they are they behave and say in later life when you go on to do other stuff, you know when everyone comes together because when you're older you don't go to any special schools, you don't work in a special area. So when you're together, everyone knows how to act. It's like we're one big family so we can just all tell each other anything, we'll all sort it out together.